The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, do not know how to, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say that. I am too young. Do not say that I am too young. I must go to Ebron. You must go to Ebron I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord, Lord reached out his hands and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. May your words live within us. And may our Lord. Amen. Our gospel reading today is from Luke chapter 4, verses 16 to 30. Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son, they asked. Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. And you will tell me, Do hear in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. Truly I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the sky was shut for three and a half years and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them but to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha, the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed only Naaman, the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove Jesus out of the town, and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built, in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. In this we listen for the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm just wondering who recently watched the awards for Australian of the Year. Did anyone notice Australian of the Year? Yes, Australian of the Year awards? Yes. And all the different ones? Does anyone remember who was called the Young Australian of the Year? Does anyone remember the Young Australians of the Year? Yes. Yes? yes. What were their names? There's a photo of them. Does anyone know why they are there? Doing washing? Jordan, Jordan. Jordan. Do you want to come out and tell us? Because it's a bit hard to hear this morning. Do you want to tell us a bit about who these guys are? They wash, Lord, they did laundry for the homeless people and they drive around their vans to different areas. That's fantastic, isn't it? I was really impressed when I saw it. Thank you. For decades, uh, mobile libraries have brought books into the lives of those who would need. Meals on Wheels has fed hundreds and thousands of those who cannot cook for themselves. But what no one thought of was creating a mobile wash uh, to wash the clothes of the homeless. 
That was until September 2014, when two best mates called Nick Marchese and Lucas Patchett, both 21, decided to give it a go. They say we wanted to build and improve the hygiene standards of the homeless. So we came up with this crazy idea of building a free mobile laundry. It started small. The Brisbane boys took an old band nicknamed Sudsy, <laughs> fitted it out with a generator, water tanks and two large washing machines and dryers. Then they started driving around town offering to clean the clothes of those who were sleeping rough. Often they would park their laundry van near food vans and free barbecues, allowing the homeless to have their clothes washed while waiting for a feed. Their charity is called Orange Sky Laundry, named after their, one of their favourite songs, Orange Sky. It now operates in 36 locations, washes 350 loads each week, over 270 volunteers have joined up to take part. Governments and local businesses have come on board to make the charity more sustainable. But after 70,000 kilos of washing, we realise it is so much more, the boy said. We can restore respect, raise health standards and be a catalyst for conversation. We have found a way to treat others how they want to be treated. One of them said last week he met a homeless man called Grant and washed his, who washed his clothes for the first time. As I passed Grant's laundry back to him, he told me something I'll never forget. Nick, he said, I haven't been able to have a conversation with anyone for over three days. So in the end, it's much more than washing clothes. It's about having a conversation. But the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the prisoner, recovery of sight for the blind, and to set the oppressed free. Here's two guys who I don't know their faith background. They may not actually have a faith background. But they're actually getting on with the job of actually making a difference in people's lives. There's a lovely video clip that describes all about this, and I invite us now to watch and listen. A world first, a free mobile laundry service for the homeless. Australia's first mobile laundry is giving the homeless some dignity by washing their clothes for free. Orange Sky Laundry è il primo servizio di lavanderia mobile per senza tetto. Was sich deshalb jetzt zwei junge Australier ausgedacht haben. Stood beneath an orange sky. Two mates have come up with a novel way to help Melbourne's homeless. So we came up with this really crazy idea of putting two washing machines and two dryers in a van and simply driving around to places where homeless people feel comfortable and washing and drying clothes for free. First wash ever in this machine. It's bang Australian sun. This is great. This is so convenient, you know. And, uh, and my God, how far do I have to carry my clothes? <laughs> Ten feet, that's it. I'm done. Thank you very much. Fast forward 10 months and it's become so popular they launched their first van in Melbourne today. They've only been around for a while but they're already starting to make a difference. Next month they're launching a second van in Cairns and another soon on the Gold Coast. They usually wash clothes for the homeless but with residents here in Yapoon unable to use their washing machines, their services are in high demand. This was the front veranda. <laughs> this was the bedroom in here. I've probably been in this stuff about three days. Stood beneath an orange sky. Lucas Patchett and Nick Marchesi want to do three things. A restore respect, raise health standards and reduce the strain on the resources. How does it make you feel when you've got clean clothes to wear? Nice and fresh. Having clean clothes sort of 
you know, it gives you that sort of self-confidence, you know, like, well, I might be homeless, but I've got nice clothes. They have access to free washing and drying facilities thanks to some terrific volunteers. And what sort of a reaction have you been getting from those who have used the service? They've been really, really appreciative. So it's something, like, as I said, that has been overlooked. It's one of the highlights of my week. Thursday's Orange Sky Day at Wickham Park. It's two prom, not only you get your washing done, but you get to meet some really wonderful people and come out of your shell a little bit more. We are Orange Sky Laundry, Australia's first ever mobile laundry mat for the homeless. Thanks heaps to all your ongoing support. Make sure you check us out at orangeskylaundry.com.au. With my brother and my sister standing by. With my brother and my sister standing by. Absolutely inspirational, isn't it? Such a simple idea. Um, but the key thing, it's far more than just washing clothes. What's happening when they're washing the clothes and people have to sit and wait? What happens? <coughs> Conversation, talking, sharing, being taught, should, being found to, to uh, have dignity for one another. I don't know if you've ever seen the people who do the, the um, big issue, hand out those things. That's a similar sort of thing about restoring dignity to people who um, are unemployed, especially people who have been long-term unemployed. And it's more than just giving them money, it's actually about talking to them. And I've heard a homeless person on the street who said, you know, giving the money to them is, is nice. That, that's great, that's helpful, that helps to at least feed them for that day. But what's more important is when someone stops and says, how's your day going? What's happening for you at the moment? It actually takes time to get to know the person. I kind of remember someone way back 2,000 years ago who did that too, who spent a lot of his time getting to know people, people who everyone else would just reject. Prostitutes, the homeless, the people on the streets, the hungry, the poor. And do you also recall what happened to him? It's in our reading this morning. The people, those in power, who are happy with the way the world is, decide they're going to toss him off the cliff. Get rid of him. And how did our reading end? He just walked through the crowd and went on his way. All of us face opportunities in our lives where we could actually, just one person at a time, make a difference. And even if we say, oh look, I'm too old, I can't get involved in those sorts of things, we can support them. You can research and find out. You can find ways of actually connecting. And you know, when you're down the parade, doing your shopping, and you see someone sitting there with a box next to them, yes, you can put some money in that box, but you could also stop and say, how are you? You have no idea where that conversation will go but you might just give a person dignity for the day. I was incredibly inspired when I heard and saw the story of these two guys. Um, and I just felt, if you haven't seen it, you need to see it and to see, be inspired yourself. For me, this week, that was the gospel being lived out in action. And that gives me real hope that we have young people in our community who actually think like that. That, for me, is an amazing miracle and a wonderful inspiration to us all.
like to share with you in response a prayer of the day by John Humphreys that I found on uh, the internet. Let's pray. Spirit who is holy, breath of God, breathe through our lives the word of God who is Christ. Inspire us ever onward toward better things which work for the common good. Lift and lead us in that next step towards the promised end. May we take humbling inspiration from the gift of faith, grit and tenacity of those who struggle and suffer. May we be awed into betterment by the loving sacrifice of simple saints who give of their best in humble service with you and with others. May we look and be encouraged into action by those who work for justice and a better world. May we follow the example of those who hold an increased peace in the trials and turmoils of human existence. May we learn a healthy appetite from those everyday saints who thirst and hunger after compassion and understanding. May we be moved by beauty in people and in nature to creativity, to creatively express our thanks and gratitude for that which simply is. May the life, truth and way of Jesus call us into learning and growth. Inspire us anew, we pray.